All right, so we all know this. Nike is one of the world's most recognizable brands. And here in Japan, the frenzy is no different. But what makes Japan just a little bit different from everywhere else? We're gonna go ahead and take a look inside Nike Harajuku to get a taste of it. So let's go ahead and get it. What's up everybody, it's your boy Reggie Casual. So the story today is Nike yet again, but with a twist. I'm gonna show you some exclusive footage, kind of like what you already saw, of Nike's premier flagship location in Harajuku. Will is giving you some pertinent info on why Japan is Nike's second most important market in the world. Now we all know the story, or at least we all should know the story. The biggest athletic apparel brand in the world is Nike, and it was started by Phil Knight and Bill Bowerman. But what you may not know is that Nike was formerly named Blue Ribbon Sports, a retailer of athletic apparel. Now this is important info on the Japan front because one of Blue Ribbon Sports most lucrative clients was a company by the name of Tiger, Onitsuka Tiger to be exact. And it happens to be one of Japan's most storied sneaker brands. It was through Tiger that Nike got its break into sneakers as they sold Tiger sneakers in America and they were pretty damn successful at it. But the story of Nike's relationship with Japan is much deeper. Phil Knight himself called Japan Nike's most important market after America. And as Japan grew economically in the 70s and 80s, as did Nike. But that's not all. It was the Japanese company Nisho Iwai that saved Nike from absolute obscurity. And I'd hate to outline all the details here, but if you haven't read Shoe Dog, the memoirs of Phil Knight, there's an awesome story about a guy named Mr. Ito, who single-handedly saved Nike from being a footnote in history. So go ahead, cop the book, read it. It's in the link below, but you have to read the story. It's amazing. That being said, Nike has a special place in the heart of Japan and the Japanese. It is for this reason that Japan is one of Nike's most concentrated markets, receiving more apparel releases, more exclusives, and more color waves than any other region. That includes America, and it has proved to be extremely lucrative for the brand. The Japanese market is a bit more adventurous when it comes to style, so Nike often takes liberties with its more ambitious designs and market tests many of them here. So it should come to no surprise that Nike's premier flagship location in Harajuku is a testament to the company's unwavering dedication to providing the best in Japan. The three-story behemoth of a store is notably the biggest in the area and comes packed with the most offerings of any Nike store in Japan. Complete with a showroom first floor that often displays the current flavor of the month, a second floor that is dedicated to apparel and lifestyle, and a third floor that takes on customization with its expanded Nike ID options, as well as housing the Jordan brand, basketball sneakers, and NBA apparel. From Jump, the interior oozes Nike with a large serving of Japanese precision. It has a nearly pristine interior, incredible spatial arrangement, and a see-it-to-believe-it display wall. You, you just have to. Basically, it's one of those must-go-tos if you land in Harajuku. Other Nike locations in Tokyo, like Nike Lab MA5 and Kicks Lounge, have cool offerings and experiences, but Nike Harajuku is a marvel. You need a minute or two to really appreciate the space, which is hard to do considering it's almost always busy. The interior was designed by Katayama Masamichi, the famed founder of Wonderwall. The same Wonderwall that has been responsible for some of the most iconic retail locations in Japan and around the world, including but not limited to nearly every vape location, Uniqlo Soho, Beams T, Marc Jacobs Aoyama, and a slew of others. So as you can see, Nike spared no expense in making Nike Harajuku as much an experience as a place to shop. And unlike other more strict Japanese retailers, Nike Harajuku allows you to take pictures, videos, sit down, and simply enjoy the space. The floor is packed with employees at nearly every available station in Flexpoint, and they can often speak both English and Japanese, so it's as much an international experience as any. So if you 
come from a Western country that speaks English or you're comfortable with using English at any capacity, then you'll certainly feel comfortable in the space. Now there is surely an argument about the best Nike flagship location in the world. I mean, you can't just choose one. That new location in New York looks especially tasty, but Harajuku definitely stands out and is a must go if you are a fan of sneakers in any capacity. Even if you're an Adidas fan, even if you're that, you should definitely take a look. In any case, tell us what you think of Nike's flagship location in Harajuku in the comments. Give a thumbs up if you like this video. Follow your boy on Instagram at Casual to see how I put some of these fits together in Japan, as well as exclusive live vlog content that you won't get anywhere else. And the casual official at thecasual.co to see fits and finds here in Japan. So stay. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. But most importantly, keep it locked right here for all of your info on international street fashion and culture from Tokyo. It's your boy, and keep it casual. I'll see you guys in a minute.